Hey guys, this is my new channel, Builds Back to Life. The inspiration from this channel has come from a lot of YouTube videos that I've been watching lately of uh, people that kind of do a lot of the passions that I like to do, and they use it as a hobby, as a job, put videos on YouTube with, and make content with. Um, I've had a passion for a long time going back to college of days of purchasing Amazon return boxes, um, flipping those, selling them for a profit, uh, individually, item-wise speaking. I noticed a lot of YouTubers, they've acquired items that may be defective, they may be broken, something about them um, needs to be repaired, and that really speaks to me. It really triggers a uh, passion inside of me that I want to do the same thing. So um, I bought a couple of different items and we're just gonna see how this channel goes. I think this channel will be mainly focused around an audience that likes to see things that are about to go to the trash dump or the original owners just don't want things anymore, but they can still be bought at a low cost and uh, perhaps even make some money if we can somehow find a way to repair them, reuse them, use them for parts. I already know sometimes we're not gonna be completely successful with fixing something, but I have a lot of electronics knowledge of just selling things on eBay and I've seen a lot of things. So I'm just gonna dive right in. We've got our first item right here in a yellow envelope and we'll open it up for you real quick here. Wow, well packaged, well packaged. I bought this on eBay for about $12 and uh, we will see if this is something that we can fix up at all. All right, so right off the bat, let me tell you a little bit about this item. This is an Alltech Lansing Mini Life Jacket 3 uh, Bluetooth speaker, I believe, and the only things that I know about it so far, all the description said it doesn't work and um, it doesn't come with any accessories or anything. So basically my first step, um, I read ahead a little bit on this guy and it does have a micro USB charging port, I think. Yes, it does. And so I'm just gonna plug that in for probably an hour or so. I may get back to it tomorrow as well. And just to see if maybe by chance the person just didn't have a cord to charge it with, and then that's the reason why they say it didn't work. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, I guess we can already just go ahead and try to power it on. Yeah, I'm not giving anything. So we'll try to plug it in first and we'll see what happens. See if maybe we get some sort of response immediately or maybe it'll take a little bit. I have no idea, honestly. So we'll just see what happens. So I've had this Bluetooth speaker charging over the entire night. I decided to do that rather than on the hour. No dice, it does not turn on at all, and no response. So basically at this point, we're just gonna have to tear into it. I have a little bit of an idea how to do that based on another person's YouTube video, but basically I'm just gonna be flying blind here. So here it goes. So on the speaker, this was on the exterior. Um, it was held in by these eight pins, and then this little colored exterior piece was underneath that one as just a cover piece. Now I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and unscrew this little screw here on the top, and hopefully that yields something. You see these little, um, little pegs kind of that are right here. Actually, it works really easily if you just take a pair of needle nose pliers uh, like these. You can see like that one just pulled right out. And so we're gonna use a screwdriver and um, get into those screw holes, do it on all four of these, and we'll see if we can open the sucker up. Hopefully you guys can see this. This is what the inside of one looks like. Probably my best plan of attack is to take out this little cable right here on the circuit board, um, just so we can get access to this battery that's behind it. My thoughts are that since it doesn't have any power, there must be something wrong with the battery or some of the connection to the battery or something. And in order to get that circuit board out, we're gonna have two very, very small Phillips head screws. I 
so basically what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to just try to disconnect some of this stuff and see if we can find a problem. This took a quite a while to get apart, but basically what I want to show you is these two pieces, um, this circuit board in particular, this is what I found while I was kind of trying to figure out how to get this thing off. This cable, it comes straight from the inputs all the way into the circuit board. There's this melted part right here in this cable, and that comes straight from the input all the way to the circuit board um, and goes to the connection on where the input charges the battery and then you know where the battery powers the whole board. Um, also on the battery itself, the battery itself looks okay, but there is a little bit of a melted piece um, right here as well. Not exactly sure what caused that. Since I had my multimeter with me, I figured I would just test the continuity of the leads between the two ends of the cable just to make sure that there's no continuity on those cables perhaps. And what I found was that all of them have continuity. Even the ones that are melted, um, they all do have continuity. Now the other thing was, um, so that would pretty much rule out that this would have a problem, um, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if there's like a weak signal or not. I'm not very well versed with the multimeter very much yet, um, but whenever I was uh, changing this DC voltage and putting it on 20, whichever contact you touch with these leads, um, it should come out to the voltage. And I think this battery is 3.7 volts, but I'm not getting anything with the leads. So, hey guys, it's a couple of days later. I did end up putting an order in for one of these batteries. It's a 2400 mAh 3.7 volt battery. It was really slim pickings online for these guys, particularly with the ones that have the uh, Molex connector, the two pin connector coming out at the side of them to join both ends of the battery. There were a couple of ones that were a little bit more affordable. The problem was they were in China and so it would have taken until July, August perhaps to get one of those. So I ended up putting an order on one. I've never bought anything from this website before, but I bought one of these from a website called adafruit.com or adafruit, however you pronounce it. It's coming from New York and I think it said it would be here within a week. And uh, total cost with shipping was around $20. So we're probably not gonna get a ton of profit off of this, but it'll probably be pretty close to even. Hopefully the battery is the problem, but we won't know until about a week or so whenever that part comes in. And it could potentially be later on. Whenever that does come in, we'll plug that in. Hopefully this speaker will work because I really don't see any problems at all. I think it's just dead and it won't take a charge at all at this point anymore. So, hey guys, welcome back. So it's been a couple of weeks ever since we started taking apart this Bluetooth speaker from Alltech Lansing. I just got the battery that we need to be able to fully test this thing and see if the battery was the issue with it. And we're going to open this up and plug it in and see if that's what rectifies the issue. It always amuses me, by the way, that this guy has a very, very large hand. I don't know if you can see it like that, but yeah, look at that massive thing. It's got like superpowers or something, hand man. All right, let's open this thing up. Let's throw that off to the side here. And look at what we have. All right, so basically, uh, if you remember what this looked like, this was the old battery um, and had this protective blue shielding around it. Ordered something similar and it was from the US. Although I've never heard of adafruit.com, but I'll post the link of where I got this battery at. And maybe you can order one too if you wanna do this by yourself as well. All right, so we need to plug this into the circuit board. All right, so it appears after looking at this a little bit more, I did not realize that these Molex connectors would be different. Um, this one, the original one, had this little guy on it, which is a bigger version of this little guy. And to get maybe a good connection, I'm gonna have to swap over this Molex connector and switch it to this one maybe, because um, it really wasn't connecting very well into that circuit board. So I'll do that off camera try to figure that out and hopefully get back to this. All right, so guys, actually after a while I was trying to switch over these connectors from the original battery to the little battery, I just thought maybe I would check and see if just putting the bare cables against the contacts where the battery is supposed to hook into the circuit board at would work and power it on. And look at what we have. We have a blue light. And I'm guessing that that means we might be able to play some music out of this. 
let me go get my phone and we'll check and see if this thing can play some music. Okay, I'm not seeing anything available to pair with. So that's not a good sign. Well, I'm not sure what's going on here. I was honestly just happy that we actually had some power going to this thing, but I'm not sure what exactly needs to happen next for this thing to really start rolling here. Tell you what, I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more and then I'll catch you guys again in a second. 